Good day, everyone. Welcome again to today's talk with Marty G, the unpodcast for everything that is, I would say, maybe local, but let's just say it's Eugenian or Oregonian or just whatever it relates to our community or business to business. It is Women's History Month, and I have yet another fabulous lady with me today. I have Paula Free. Hello, Paula. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for being on with me today. I'm glad to see you. I didn't want to come in. The weather's getting nice. I tell you, it's getting beautiful. I know. Mm-hmm. Have you been doing anything special now that spring has finally sprung? And unfortunately, fun things like taxes and, you know, book work, computer stuff. Um, I did get to go on a, a little run. I ran two miles on Sunday. And I think it rained on Sunday, right? Yes, it did, as a matter of fact. So God bless you. Anyway, got a nice raincoat. I just slipped the little hood up and my little warm ear warmers and went for it. And I actually love to run in the rain. I'd rather run when the sun's out and it's like, you know, 80, not much hotter than that, but just a neighborhood little jot around the block. So. Well, and plus, you really don't need to carry a water bottle if you're running in the rain, right? You just kind of tilt I your know. head back and just get a glass. And- <laughs> yeah, it wasn't raining that much. So oh, very good. It wasn't so, a benefit. So tell us about what you do and where you're from. Who do you represent, Paula? I know, but let's tell everybody who you are, what okay. you do. In 2016, I started a nonprofit called Power On With Limb Loss. I say that slowly because it's kind of a mouthful and we got to catch that limb loss. In 04, my husband and I crashed our motorcycle. I got pretty banged up and uh, seven years and six surgeries later, we had to amputate the left foot. And I just thank God that it was below the knee because above the knees, amputees is is far more difficult than being a, a below the knee. Okay. Um, I actually had to have two amputations because the first one left me a few years later with a very pointed tibia and it got to be extremely painful. Mm-hmm. So the doctor rounded that off and then uh, magically finally met, which now is a very good friend of mine that uh, we have like 25 things in common. We're both hairdressers, so on and so forth. I lost my leg due to a motorcycle. She lost hers due to a motorcycle and she started doing 5K runs. And I don't know what popped. I have never been a runner. And I just thought, wow, if she can do it, I can do it. So I went out front, grabbed my husband, made him go with me. And I thought if I can just make it to the end of the block and that started the whole succession of running, training, if I could just do that first 5K, now 40, 50, some 5Ks later, some five-mile runs, some 10-mile butte to buttes. Oh, my um, gosh. Yes, they're, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're six miles, I guess. And when I was 64, a few years ago, I ran the half a marathon in Eugene. So those are kind of some of my wow. very um, important accomplishments. And when you, when I first started running, I basically, I, I tell people, I just wanted to find other amputees to go run with me and to go have fun. This is so much fun. And, and um, I, I did a, a newspaper article, I did television spots and mm-hmm. got a couple of amputees that contacted me and we formed a team of 13 we weren't all amputees, but helpers. Okay. My grandson was five, and we went out. That was my first or second 5K. So, so that started it. I'm like sweating here listening to you. I mean, <laughs> I literally, I've got all of my limbs, and I'm thinking 5Ks and all this other. And you're doing this with, with like one limb less, and you're doing yes. all this and having yes. fun doing it. Oh my gosh, yeah, and the guns. And then you said something, and you told me this earlier, and I was scratching my head going, that's impossible. You, you just, you're about to turn 60 what? <laughs> Never I'll mind, we'll just, say, we'll just say you're getting there. I'm not going to tell you at your age. We don't need yeah. to know. But I'm a grandma. <laughs> it's just you're in great shape, and you're still having fun. I'm loving it. And, you know, that all started just 
as a simple thing. I wanted to do this. I wanted to meet up other amputees. I wanted to get my husband and my grandson off the couch, the kids out from in front of the video games and let's go have fun. And um, here's one of our events. Uh, this was during COVID. Of course, oh. we didn't have to put masks on in the water, but we Thank did goodness. in the establishment. This is behind the Oregon City waterfalls. And we were only able to take eight people out on kayaks that day. That's beautiful. Um, planning on doing it again next year. That's so fabulous. So, so now you said it um, earlier, you, do you have to be an amputee to be involved and to do some of these things? We, we encourage people, we, we cloned a new term of limb differences. Okay. When I have my conferences and events like this, um, Jeanette's in here somewhere. She's got a hip replacement. She has broken more bones than any of us could shake a stick at. This guy on the bike with me is in his early 30s. That one there? Um, he's uh -huh. legally blind, missing both legs. Uh, he was in charge of the brakes that day. Okay. Because he does have m both hands and the brakes were, and I was in charge of steering. Now you've got a hundred pound me and an almost 300 pound Jakey. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like brakes, Jake, brakes, brakes as we're brakes. going around the corner. And he almost, yeah. uh, we both went back and told everybody he tried to kill me. And he was saying I tried to kill him. <laughs> this is called bow yoga. And this is my friend, Michelle, I was talking about earlier. Okay. Just doing a, a yoga pose. That's um, so cute. Michelle's very athletic. Uh, she's a retired hairdresser now. Okay. The guy in the kayak on the side is missing his arm. Uh -huh. um, if anyone knows Shannon Nell, they, yeah. they're both pretty much similar. They mm -hmm. don't have any use of the entire shoulder and that side. So um, these are pretty cool. I think they're called fishing kayaks. Oh, okay. So if you're fishing with your hands, you can pedal with your feet. So that worked out well for him since he's only got one hand. Perfect, perfect. Again, behind the... So, um, yes, we've done other things. This is Jake. Instead of rock wall climbing, they have this apparatus. And this was at my third conference, I believe, which we're going to be in the process of planning. Mm -hmm. And this was a sailboat tour we did. The boys were over on the other ones. The girls were on this one. I don't know why we did that. It just Because they're boys way. and girls. <laughs> we didn't plan it that way. It just happened. Um, this is really, really fun. This is our team of, I believe, 27 in the Dirty Dash. Oh, so my God. Some of the I did that. That is empty. rough. Yeah. We had people in wheelchairs. Um, the picture of the three ladies, uh, uh, Katie Sullivan, set a world record and if I can get this straight, 2011, running a hundred meter in like 17 seconds. Holy and cow. she's an above the knee amputee. So wow. since then, there's been other records set, you know, and I did this little tutu thing for a long time. If I'm going to go run and play, I'm going to be silly about it. And this is me up well, at... Do on a sit ski, and we got nice. to go again this year. So, um, yep, take me on the highest mountain, scare the living daylights out of me. And just Let's push you over it. the side, and you got yeah. it. You got it. You got it. It's just like put, put yeah. you in a sit ski, and you're good to go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We've done surf events with Amp Surf. They came up from San Diego, and this was during COVID. I've got a mask on. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that was my. I see someone this playing the drums friend. here. Yes, my friend Joe, we were able to do a fundraiser and fit him with prosthetics and he's playing drums. So we are looking for other amputees, whether they're a leg or a finger or whatever, to form a band for our next conference. So oh. he is wildly excited about doing this. And I think one of his... Um, band teachers that's not an amputee is going to be in the band. He plays the guitar with him. 
So we're working on that right now. Okay. And got archery. Archery. We've done a couple of archery events. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the greatest picture in there. She's missing fingers. And another friend of mine developed a, excuse me, like a swivel wrist type of um, prosthetic that you can wear on both hands. Oh, and we have okay. other pictures of her shooting with that on, but she kind of preferred the sock. Shannon Nell For shooting, Shannon. we drilled holes in his $3,000 prosthetic so he could learn to shoot a bow. Wow. Um, that's that's me and Joe up there. He, uh -huh. again, doesn't have the hands, so I did it. And, and the cutest thing, he's so polite and so wonderful. I said, is it okay if I put my arm around you like this? And he said, oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to say him. no to a hot redhead? Are you kidding? I know. Please. Please. Like, yes, I know. yes like, please. Pretty please. Then. I don't know. It's all about shooting the bow, Joe. Right? <laughs> So this is here's here's something I want to say as a take a takeaway from what we're looking at here. There really isn't anything that someone who has lost a limb can't do. Is is that something safe to say? Is that is, absolutely is that minimizing absolutely. it? Absolutely. I had a um, activities director from Shriner, Shriners Hospital do an interview with me, and that's what she was coming from. She was wanting to know, well, what are you going to do if you're putting on an archery shoot or something and you've got this kid with with no arms and it's like well joe's missing his arms right about here mm -hmm. but we'll figure it out we'll figure it out if i have to help or my husband has to help or you know i can hold the bow we we've got joe now shooting a bow with a it's a form called an ishi and it it basically is a hard, rigid thing that looks like this. You put the bow around it, you clamp it down, and then he puts a tab in his mouth and oh, pulls, pulls the bow back and shoots. And the other guy that I was telling you about, Kevin, mm -hmm. that is missing his arm above his elbow, he can shoot a bow the same way. So if you're missing both arms, maybe even... I did jewelry with a little four-year-old little girl that was had absolutely no arms okay. right at the shoulder. And she was so proud of herself. She could cut strings with scissors with her toes. Wow. So, so, um, so another yeah. takeaway is, is, is adapting. You know, I think- Adapting. I look at it, I mean, out. that's the human spirit. We're supposed to be able to adapt, right? Yes. But I think we get yes. comfortable. Right, yes. you just don't do it. No, have to. Don't mm -hmm. need to. And I look at COVID as a perfect example. I mean, listen, I, I think about how many people I talked to, who were so upset when the first restrictions came down because they couldn't go out, they couldn't go do this, they couldn't go do that, they had to do this, they had to, do, they had all these restrictions. And then I thought about my life prior to all these restrictions. Well, I had pretty much have gone everywhere I wanted to go. Pretty much have done everything I wanted to do to that point. I mean, there, mm -hmm. I've lived my life without any real mindset of, well, I'm not. I'll do that later. I'll just kind of do it later. So now mm -hmm. you're forced into this mindset, but you don't have to be. You right. can always adapt and figure out how to right. keep doing things. How has COVID affected uh, affected you oh. with with everything? Well, my new expression is our silver lining. Okay. Um, Un unfortunately, the numbers of amputations, there's there's like 2.5 million people living. No, wait a minute. 2.5. What, what are the yeah, 2.1 as I'm looking up at my chart, 2.1 million people living in the United States that are amputees or people with limb, limb differences. Mm -hmm. There's about 185,000 people amputated every year with or without COVID. So um, fortunately, I, I say, you know, the COVID, the silver lining within COVID is, I guess, the proper way to say that is I have been extremely busy and I've actually am looking for a part time person that would go into a full time. I've been doing 90 percent of it. I do have some amazing directors, but I sit here every day and do the the dreadful this and right. the planning and but I get to go have the fun too right. so um, I'm involved with the amputee coalition I'm a trained 
trainer for peer visitors. So that's, we have three main programs. Our peer visiting program, you just lose a limb, you're down in the dumps, whatever. Hopefully soon, and I wanna do a medical professional seminar so more medical professionals will know we're here and then they will refer new amputees to me. Right so to people you. find me, and I was joking around for quite a while, a lot of my closer amputee friends, heck, I just picked them up at the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's like your parents said, you can meet a nice boy at the store. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, oh, I ran over to help a guy thinking, oh, he's pushing a shopping cart from his wheelchair. Didn't know he was an amputee. I didn't know he was a double amputee. Wow. I just saw him doing that. And I jumped out of my car, ran over, and this guy had the groceries in his car before I could get there. And then we're standing at the front door talking and realizing, you know, I sh immediately show him my foot because I don't want him to think something weird's going on. Right, and, right. Do do? and then up walks another lady and the three of us are blocking the doorway because she's also an amputee. And, and it was just so cute. So I, I imagine there's got to be like a community feeling with 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 folks that are amputees, right? I mean, there's got to be this this like bond. Is that is that like an initial like almost immediacy that happens? I have to catch myself. So yes, you worded that very nicely. Um, I kind of get excited when I've done a peer visit, or I have a new person in our support groups, mm -hmm. or someone new comes to one of our events. It's not, I'm happy they're, they just lost their limb. I'm excited because of the camaraderie and helping them realize that the things you think you'll never be able to do, you can do. If you right. want to do it, it's all up here more than it is here or down, you know, below the knee. Or um, I, like I said, was never a runner before. And now I... I'm a very slow runner. <laughs> hey, I'm girlfriend, it doesn't matter. How, you would beat me, okay? Let's just put it put it out there. I've got a lot of, I mean, a COVID like 90 around the midsection here. You would beat me hands down. Now, also, I'm going to tell on you because you've got to show an audience. You just got something brand new that kind of matches my background back here on your arm. Can you show us what you just got? I got to aim the right way here. So uh, there yeah, we go. Okay, there it is. That is so cool. Her arm matches my background. And yeah. that is your very first cool? tattoo. In my 60s. In and your 60s. So you know it's downhill from here. If next time I see you, you're going to like have a sleeve. You'll have like your nose pierced. More. Your ears will be more. gauged. I'll be like, whoa. <laughs> No, a little bit more somewhere. I haven't figured it out yet. So the cute thing about it, um, my husband and I are, let's say we're bikers, right? We okay. ride a Harley. It's still out in the garage. Okay. He's wrecked it twice. I wasn't on it the second time, thank God. But we're probably the only people we know that ride Harleys that have never had tattoos until oh. now. <laughs> So you guys were the outsiders. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. Wrong with you so guys? Are you like, guys cops? <laughs> so against it. Yeah. So, oh, he's like, no, you know, you're going to move down under the bridge if you get a tattoo until I brought this up. But I did wait. He was gone for almost a month hunting when I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, he's going to be sad. He's like, that's really cool. It wow. Took my husband. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I, you know, know. Paul, I will tell you, I, I love everything that you do. I, I see you around. I know we've got some pending stuff we're going to be doing possibly later on, but I just love work, just the work you do, the energy you bring. I want to be able to help you. I mean, I see you're looking for someone, right? Now, I don't do a lot of networking like I used to because I'm working a job now, but I still yeah. do refer where I can. So tell me and everybody that's going to watch this, how can we help you? I'm learning so much. Um, first off, I'm doing things I never thought I would could do, th this kind of stuff. Um, every day it's a new uh, training period for me. I'm very, very dyslexic. I struggled through school, which I have to say, to me, it's like somebody that's blind, their other senses take over and they're better at those other senses. So because I can't spell very well, 
my other senses took over and I have energy and positive stuff in other areas, you might say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, in order to keep a nonprofit alive, and especially something that's so specialized, getting medical professionals to know what we do, getting other amputees to know what we do, and that we're here, we're right here in Eugene, Springfield, Oregon. I work out of a bedroom in my house, pretty much. And so recognition is so very important. Get the so word any out. way possible for people to recognize that we're here and what we do. And um, there's always the, the donors and the fundraisers. Okay. I think this summer, I just came up with this the other day, I love hiking too, Ooh. is okay. we're going to do a power on hike-a-thon. Doesn't that sound sweet? That rolls, that's and, nice alliteration, rolls right off the tongue. I like it. It does, yes, it I does. know, I like that. I came up with that all by myself. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we don't know where yet, and we don't know exactly when. We're going to do a lot of pre-conference events. This is where you're coming in the mix here with helping me. Okay. So things like uh, kayak days, um, bike days. Um, maybe another archery, but just where we can get out and have fun. We can publicize it and build it into our grand finale, which will be our conference, which we're looking at November. Okay. So um, that got bumped and bumped again and bumped again due to the fact that it's COVID. COVID. People don't yeah. wanna, I'm, I'm, I'm co mass I'm on. COVID, flex uh, COVID flexible instead of gender yeah. fluid. I'm COVID flexible. <laughs> there you go. That's very cute. So yeah, we're looking for more excitement. There's okay. always sponsorships for our conference and our events. We're always looking for donors, what nonprofit isn't. Right. And you can always find me on Power On with Lem Loss. Uh, we have a page on Facebook, Paula okay. Free on our my personal Facebook. I try to hit and miss on both of them, Instagram. Power on with limb loss. I haven't yet got into TikTok, but that's in the near future. Okay. So, um, I mean, you already got my next question. I was going to say, how do we get a hold of you? Where, where else? I mean, I'll put that information in the contact, but where else can we get you? On our website. Okay. You and I'll put all that, folks, in the comment section down at the bottom to make sure you guys can get a hold of her. Uh, so, any parting thoughts? Anything you want to share before we go? I, I just basically feel like I said just about everything, but we are growing. We're getting to know more people. It isn't just restricted to limb difference or amputees. I think we use the word amputee more than anything just because it's a go-to. Right. Um, if you've had a toe removed, um, a finger removed, a uh, knee replacement, hip replacement, there's value in Whatever your disability, and I kind of hate to use that word, that you can bring to the table to help other people. I never thought I'd run again. I never thought I'd dance again. A bunch of stuff, you know, so um, I'm doing it. And yeah. you can do it too. That's awesome. We have, um, there's a video, uh, I believe you can find it on YouTube called Yes, I Can. I'm not in that video, but it is so cool. Okay. So, and you want to talk history? There's a movie called Crip Camp. Like, I watched that. Yes. <gasps> that is a great documentary. Isn't that? Oh, cool? just mine. Oh, no. Mine was like. <sighs> it's not about amputees, it's about people with cerebral palsy. And, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I can name off several but it's yeah. way back in the days matter of fact it's early 50s <laughs> yeah and back. what they went through to and i knew you would know about this yeah. getting uh accessible sidewalks and accessible stair how do you get into a library and where mm -hmm. they were put and hidden that makes all this that i'm doing and that we're all doing possible yeah so um yeah if i was to plug any of those things oh, we also have a youtube channel that we are in the minute stages of building fun okay. stuff. Well, so I'll get I, these links from you for sure and make sure that I put those also in the comments as well, okay? Okay. So folks, reach out to Paula. I'll have all of her contact information here in the comments. 
if you'd like to be a guest on my show. This wasn't too painful, was it? Was this fun? No, this was fun. Hey, okay. Marty, you're always fun. Oh, thank you. I know some people that would probably say I'm not. No. But they're no longer <laughs> with us. I, uh, I can't tell you where the bodies are. I Just kidding. Better. So... Okay. <laughs> If you guys want to be a guest of the show, I'll have my link on the bottom as well. You can click and get yourself signed up. But, Paul, it's always a pleasure. I, you, you shocked me today with, with the age thing. I mean, my mind's blown because I never even – I thought you were, like, in your, like, you know, maybe early 40s maybe into your 50s. Yeah, right. Oh, dang. Damn, girl, as we say in my hood. <laughs> Zoom's doing me justice then. Yeah. Yes, it is. So thank yes, you again very them. much. We'll be talking soon. With the what's Stay that? fine. Let's start with the who she. <laughs> Playing game like 2D. I been kicking <laughs> like Bruce Lee. Okay. Margarita to the brim tip. Black denim need a slim fit. Yeah. Same people that I flex with be the ones that I'm in the gym with. I'm a living legend. You a dead cause and I'm dead. No, I'm dead, right? Leave her early, but I'm here night. Long and short to keep the head right. Teed up out in Malibu. Got sand all in my good shoes. Press a with the pessimism, but I only came for the good news. I am the show that they came for. Hitting the target I aim for. We been discussing the contract. Just telling they get what they pay for. I am not f***ing with poverty. Really, it started to bother me. I need the yacht with the property. They come with the view that you gotta see. Came up from the basement. Hit the rooftop with a passion. Bad with some good credit in a good sense for the fashion. Dope blow.